done in this place today in our lives as you've willed it in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away.
Thank you for your faithfulness. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord.
desperate for your presence and all we need is you
stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and
that point in time, Nehemiah wrote in Nehemiah 6, 9, if all of them were trying to frighten us, thinking they will become discouraged with the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. In Georgia today, that verse still applies. Here's my updated version. There are those that are trying to frighten and intimidate us. For they are thinking that we will become discouraged with God's work so it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen us so we'll take a stand in your name. There, on Tuesday, Pastor Ron led worship at the Religious Freedom Rally inside the Georgia Capitol building. The rally was held to urge our state representatives and senators to pass the Re Religious Freedom Restoration Bill without amendments. Due to a series of U.S. Supreme Court rulings during the last part of the 20th century, our First Amendment right to the free exercise of religion was diluted to a second-class right. Then in 1993, the U.S. Congress passed the Religious Freedom Restoration Amendment to protect our religious rights. However, in 1997, the U.S. Supreme Court limited the measure, measure to just federal law. As a result, since then, 30 states have taken actions to enact laws modeled after the federal Religious Freedom Restoration Amendment in order to stop efforts that might limit a person's free exercise of religion. The Georgia bill would forbid state government from infringing on a person's religious beliefs unless the government can prove it.
sing praises to you. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we bless your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can give him praise. Sunday, everybody. If you're visiting for the first time, we're so glad that you're here. We want to get to know you, so stick around after service and meet people. If this is your church home, uh, we have quite a few announcements this morning. Um, we're starting two new groups. The first is a Young Mothers Encouragement Group, and this is going to be on Thursdays at my house, so if you're interested, please come see me. I'm Christina. Um, it's going to be starting around 9.30 in the morning and from like 9.30 to 11.30. And babysitting will be provided. If you have a, a young infant, a toddler, preschool age child, babysitting will be provided. So please come. We had a, we've met twice and we've just had a lot of fun. So please consider joining us on Thursday mornings. Um, the second group is an intercessory prayer group. Yes, yes, you can be excited about that. And it's going to be the second and fourth Thursdays, I believe, at 7.30 p.m. right here. So please join us um, as we pray for our church, neighborhoods, country, the world. <laughs> we have a lot of praying to do. So please um, come on Thursdays, second and fourth Thursdays for that. The Living Arts Gallery is in need of a team to help facilitate events. Where's Troy? There he is. If you have a heart... Um, for worshiping God through art. We have many artists in our midst, and if that's something that God has put on your heart, please consider contacting Troy to help with that ministry. And last thing, this coming Saturday, we are going to have a paint day. I know you're really excited about that. The children's ministry rooms are in desperate need of painting. So this is an all hands on deck kind of call, correct? Yes, yes, okay. Saturday morning at 9 a.m. That's this Saturday, the 14th. If you think you may be able to help with painting, could you just like raise your hand? Anybody, anybody? Come on, come on, we need lots of painters. Okay, awesome, thank you, bless you guys. All right, well, good morning. Is, um, are, is the intercessory group meeting this Thursday? This Thursday night, seven o'clock, 7.30? Um, if you are interested in being a part of our intercessory group or team, you know, it's 7.30 right here in the sanctuary, um, you're, w you're welcome to come. Uh, Rich and Mary are heading up. They put, there's Rich putting his hand up. They're heading up our intercessory team. And I really believe this, that God is beginning to do some wonderful things because we're beginning to pray. And speaking of prayer, I... I want to ask you all to do me a favor. If we could pray, I told him we would do this. Yesterday, I was, I was cleaning my truck, oh, 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 and um, and making it look nice, clean the tires and stuff. And uh, my neighbor came out. And I haven't seen him in a, probably several months, and, uh, but I didn't recognize him because he was so skinny. And I looked over and I said, I said, Jim, I said, how you doing? And he goes, and I knew. I walked over, and I said, what's happened? And he goes, I just got diagnosed with esophageal cancer, stage three. And he can't eat, and they had to put a feeding tube in his stomach, and they think it went to his liver, too, you know, cancer. And um, he's lost 85 pounds, weeks. Um, and I said, we will pray for him today. It's not a downer. This is a joy, because we get to join with him and his family in prayer. So would you pray with me for a moment? Take a moment and, and, and ask the Lord to heal Jim. Just ask him. Lord, I come to you on behalf of Jim and Christy, his wife, and your whole family. But Father, right now in Jesus' name we speak to that cancer and command it in Jesus' name to die off. You have no authority. I know that Christy loves you, and I believe that, Lord, you're working in Jim's life. 
So right now, in your great love and compassion, I ask that you will heal Jim. We command his body to be healed in Jesus' name. We command it in Jesus' name to be healed. And we ask that, Lord, that you comfort his family during his time and strengthen them and give Jim in his heart and spirit a, a, a tenacity to not give up. And, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said. Okay, we have one more quick thing that we wanted to do this morning. Um, where's all the pregnant mommies? Where's all the pregnant mommies? Pregnant mommies, come forward. Pregnant mommies, come forward. I know, right? We have two, we have two more, but they're not here today. So, um... These are the pregnant mommies along with two others that are not here present with us. But one thing we wanted to do, and this kind of came to my attention in the last month, and it was to be in prayer for you guys. You know, children are a gift from the Lord. Thank you, God, for all of our children. And, you know, we need to keep lifting all of you up in prayer. Pregnancy is not easy for some. Some just do it really well. Others don't do it so well. Some of you have had your struggles. Some of you have told me your personal struggles on just even getting pregnant. So, and then some of us just do it naturally. So all that to say, we wanted to pray for you guys this morning. So the elders are going to come forward. And if anybody else that wants to just come and agree, we're just going to take a minute. We're going to anoint you guys with oil. We're just going to pour it all over you guys. Good belly rub. And... um. Then I'm just going to hand the mic over, and we're just going to take a couple of minutes because we have some other things going on this morning, but we just want to bless God for them. So. Lord, we thank you for children. And you said in your word that they're a gift from you. And Lord, the, the wonder and miraculous gift of birth that you've given us. And how you bring life into this world is amazing. And Father, right now in Jesus' name, we ask in Sonny and Kelly in, in April's life, and Paola and, and Anna. That's right, Anna's pregnant. We ask for all these, these five women, a number of grace, five. And Lord, we just speak grace and we speak your, your protection over these children that the enemy in no way, no way would try to steal these children. And we ask that, Lord, that just as in what John the Baptist said, we'll be filled with your spirit from the womb. And they will leap and dance and rejoice in you. Lord, we pray for strength for the, for the moms as they carry the children. And we pray, Lord, for a wonderful, wonderful time being pregnant. And all the provision is needed. So right now, in Jesus' name, we ask for a holy protection over them all, over their families. And we thank you for them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, youngins, you're free to go. Everyone else stand up and greet somebody just for a moment, if you would. No, no, there's no prayer time. Go, go.
All righty, let's round them back up so we can have a good time. This morning, we have a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Joni's with us, as you all know. Yay! And, and so, we're just going to bring her up. We're going to pray for her and turn the Holy Spirit loose in her. <laughs> Father, we bless you for our dear sister Joni. And we ask that, Lord, that you would just speak through her, to her, and use your mind. Holy Spirit, you're free to do what you want. May our hearts and may anything we do, not, nothing hinder you this morning. And, Lord, we, we receive, Joni, we receive the blessing that she is. And there you have in your church. In his name. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. It's good to be here. I am uh, actually on my way moving out west. I'm moving uh, to, to the Phoenix, Arizona area very soon. And so for the next two months, I'm on the road. My mobile home has already been sold. My belongings are already in shipment out to Phoenix. I've already got my apartment rented. And so my things will be there even before I am. But keep me in prayer if you wouldn't mind for my new venture. But I believe it's that type of a year where God is definitely doing some new things. So I'm just going to pray. So, Lord, I just thank you for each and every one here, and I ask you that you would just continue to pour out your spirit in an awesome way. And, Lord, I just ask that you would bring us up to the next level of being able to hear and understand what your spirit is saying to the church in this time period. And, and Father, we just thank you for all you're doing here. I thank you for Ron and Denise and for each one that's here. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, I was thinking about Ron and Denise and how long I've known them. You know, they've just been really good friends. And so I, I just kind of have a, a mischievous uh, way of thinking about things sometimes. And then I was also thinking about, yeah, they, they knew me and loved me even when I was really heavy, you know, and I'm still working on it, but I've lost over 100 pounds and, and God is good. And, and the Lord loves to joke around with me, and he said, yeah, they've been friends with you through thick and thin, haven't they? <laughs> Puts a whole new spin on that, doesn't it? <laughs> and in many other ways than the weight. <laughs> so I'm really excited because I, um, last year was a rough year for me. <laughs> Not that this one's been any less rough, but at least there's been a few good things going on, too. But started out last year, uh, my spiritual mentor and, and Papa and the Lord, Bob Jones, passed away in February. My brother passed away in June, and a whole bunch of other things had happened by then. And, you know, I, I just was, Lord, what's going on? And he began to speak to me about um, that it was preemptive of the year that's coming up now, and the enemy was trying to discourage us and stop us and make us give up before we got to this year because there was so much going to go on. But, you know, in my home church uh, back in West Virginia where I've been for a few years, the pastor and all of us were also saying, God, what happened? You know, this year we were saying, what happened to all the promises that we felt like that we had last year that were going to come to pass last year? Did we mishear you or, or what was the deal? And, um, and the pa pastor got a word, so I'm going to give you the word that he got because I believe it's a word for the whole body of Christ in this time period everywhere I went, and it's in 1 Samuel 30, and starting in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them, Pursue them, for surely you shall overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And what I believe that the Lord is saying through, through this is, if you haven't gotten the things God has promised you, don't worry, because this is the year that you will recover all. You'll recover all. Say all. all. And so then in uh, verse 18 to 20, David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which had been taken from them. David recovered all. Say again, all. all. Then David took all the flocks and herds they had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. 
So I really believe we need to get the mindset to understand that God really means it when he says that we're going to recover all. That's everything. Whatever it is that the enemy has stolen, whatever it is you've been waiting on, this is a year to recover all. And the other thing is this, you know, as we're going along our, our pathway and everything, we need not to give up or settle for anything that is less than what God promised. So the Lord spoke to me one morning and he said, 2015 is the year to give up. And I was like, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, you know. <laughs> To which he laughed at me since it was him speaking to me. I was rebuking him in his own name. <laughs> and he said, I'm telling you that it's time to give up what you've been willing to settle for and to get my best that you were made for. And so, you know, God wants us to give up whatever it is that we've been willing to settle for because he has much better for us. And in this year, Psalm 65, 11, he crowns his year with his goodness and his paths drip with ab abundance. Now... I, I, you know, sometimes I hate putting out words because then I have to live them. <laughs> Just saying. That's the rough part about being prophetic. You'll put something out, and then the next thing you know is like, I thought that was for them. I didn't know I was going to have to go through it too. <laughs> and uh, so he told me that this year was going to be a year of acceleration and breakthroughs and suddenlies upon us, so much so that we may find it a challenge to keep up. Now, that first part was fine, but the challenge to keep up part... <laughs> hasn't been too awfully fun. But I promise you, that's what's going on in this time period. Which means, you know, when it comes to uh, being overly concerned with what's going on, when it comes to thinking about, oh, we're not gonna make it, the things God's promised me haven't uh, come to pass so far, and they're not about to, you know what? You just need to tell your mind to shut up, because no, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and I really believe that it's also a time when we need to personally know what our time and season is. You know, just like the sons of Issachar knew their times and seasons, the Lord says it's time for us individually to know the time and season that we're in, as well as the rest of the body of Christ. And also, they knew, you know, the uh, sons of Issachar knew what Israel ought to do in those times and seasons. And so we need to know what we're supposed to do in those times and seasons as well. And the Lord says, even if you've messed up, that's what the blood of Jesus is for. <laughs> because when we go to him, if, even if it's been our fault that we've messed up, that we're not walking in what he's called us to, we can go to him. There's forgiveness. The blood of Jesus covers it. He doesn't remember it anymore. You can leave it in the past, and you can go forward. So whether you've messed up or missed out, whether it's your fault or somebody else's, God is in the restoration business. And I really felt like that the Lord said also, um, don't fear change. Now, I really feared change. When I first was thinking about moving, number one, I was going to move to Los Angeles. And because that's where I grew up, and I've always wanted to go back there. And so I had it all set up. I was going to spend three or four months with a friend of mine, rent a room off the side of her house. She didn't care that I had my puppy dog. She has a fenced in yard. She's got a couple dogs too, and so what's three more, you know? And, uh, and we have a really good relationship and friendship over the years and all that. And then I heard that a prophecy that Bob Jones had given about the big one, big earthquake in Southern California had come to pass. That was, he said the forerunner of it would be that there would be a simultaneous earthquake in Calexico and Mexicali, and that occurred in January. So I was like, oops, my bad. <laughs> Don't think I really actually wanna live. Uh, where the earthquake's going to happen, and I hope that he'll give me a heads up so I'm not visiting there when it happens. And then I had a friend of mine that in the Phoenix area that just had been encouraging me for over a year to move there, and I felt like, well, that'll give me the opportunity to be near Los Angeles, still go over there, go over to Sacramento, but be far enough away to hopefully be safe from all that. And so began to work on that end of it. And at first, I was going to keep my home back, and I'm telling you this for a reason, I was gonna keep my home back in West Virginia, and as well as go out there and just try it out for three or four months, but I would have my options open. <laughs> and I went down to South Florida, and a wonderful group of people down there uh, that have the Harbor Church down there gave me a house to use free of charge for six weeks on their property, 15 minutes from the beach, 
and everything, and which meant I didn't have to have so many meetings to try to make ends meet to pay for a hotel bill during that time. I could actually have some downtime. <laughs> That's like something I've not ever had before, especially near the beach. And as I was there, the Lord spoke to me, and he, he began to tell me. Well, first of all, they were still mowing lawns in January. All right, they, they do that in South Florida. As you all know, you live there. And uh, the thought came to me, oh, my gosh, it's almost time. I'm going to have to pay $100 every week or 10 days again for them to mow my lawn back in West Virginia, and I won't even be there. <laughs> That's $300 a month, and I'm not even there, plus paying rent and utilities. And I'm like, oh, God, maybe I shouldn't be making this move. And just all of these things began to flood me and fear, panic. I, mean, I was actually starting to have panic attacks, which I haven't experienced in years. And then I said, well, I, you know, plus that, and I, I can't just, like, give up the mobile home. And the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, burn your boat. Now, and I was like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and so, you know, years ago, there was this guy named Cortez that he and his men were exploring, and they went to, I think it was South America, and they decided they would, you know, keep their boats there and everything so that if things went wrong, that they could have an out and leave. And so finally, Cortez and a couple of his other guys went out and burned the boat so that they would have no option except to succeed in where they were at. And so I was like, well, I can't do that. And I gave him the Lord a list of things. I don't have anybody to take over the mobile home. I don't have anybody to take over the lease on the land and all of that. And within four hours, listen, folks, four hours, it was all taken care of. I got a phone call from somebody asking me if I was wanting to get rid of the mobile home. Um, I gave that person my mobile home. I gave them all my furniture. And, I, and within, within that four hours as well, I found the apartment that I wanted out in the Phoenix area, got it all put together. I mean, God just supplied everything within four hours. And I'd been struggling about this for over a year and keeping my options open. And just over and over again, multiplied times, uh, confirming people that I was, where I was ministering at would walk up to me and they would say, I just see you with your van and a trailer moving all the way across country. <laughs> And then two pastors came up to me, and both of them had had a dream that I was someplace where there was cactus, and I was watering the cactus, that there was like this little container on the top of them that you open up, and the cactus had been dry, and I opened up that little container, and I had a watering can, and I was watering the cactus, and then I'd flop the lid back and go to walk away, and all of a sudden, the cactuses would bloom with little flowers. And, and so just over and over again, all of these confirmations. But at the same time, there were bad things going on, too. And so I want to I tell you just a short little story. So my son is 37, I'm sorry, 36 years old. He'll be 37 this year. And um, he had been in a lot of trouble before. Many of you prayed for me when he was in prison and everything. He's been out two years. He's done really well. He's had a great job. He's been a forklift operator at a place that... Uh, gets groceries for Winn-Dixie, and he would have to, like, put his forklift under these pallets full of groceries, like almost two stories high, take them over to the truck and put them in, and, and then go get another load. Now, those things are huge. They're, they weigh a lot and everything else. Well, anyway, this one night he has his dream, and in the dream, he's going up the side of a mountain, and there's a lot of people that are going up the side of the mountain with him, and there's these little bushes that are actually gold, growing out the side of this mountain, and they were all getting a hold of them. But, and they were fine with them and all their friends getting a hold of it, but every time he'd try to get some of the gold, they would try to knock him off the mountain. And so finally, an older man up at the top saw what was going on, reached down, grabbed a hold of my son's hand, yanked him up to the top, and the others kind of fell off the mountain, and this man started filling my son's arms with this gold. So he wakes up, and he's like, what on earth was that about? Goes to work, and, and like I said, he drives a forklift, had never had a problem whatsoever with it, and in the last two to three hours of his shift, now pay attention to that timing, last two to three hours of his shift, twice the whole entire forklift went like this, actually lifted up off the ground from the, the right-hand wheels, and he said, Mom, I'm telling you, there's no reason why that stuff shouldn't have fallen off of it, but it was like the hand of God reached out and uprighted it all. 
And he said, if it would have fallen, it wouldn't have just killed me. It would have killed two to three other people down there on the floor. And he said, I was so glad when my shift was over. I clocked out, and then I got somebody hollering at me from the break room, and I went over there, and there's my four top bosses and some other guy. And he thought, oh, no, I'm in trouble now. So he goes in, and he was almost trying to say to them, I'm so sorry, because what they like to do is if you make any kind of mistake at all, they lay you off for a week or two weeks because it's 10 working days, so it's two full weeks, and they don't give you pay or anything else. And, but he couldn't get any words out of his mouth, and he was trying to say, I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened, you know, but it wouldn't come out of his mouth. Good thing, because the next thing you know, they said, well, uh, we just want you to know, this is Ed here, and, and you know all the rest of us, and we just want you to know that for the past, now get this, for the past two to three hours, we've been talking about you. And my son thinks, oh, God, for sure, I am a dead duck, you know. And so he tries to say something again, and it's like the Lord just blocks him from being able to speak, and he's getting a little bit frightened. And so then all of a sudden they said to him, well, this is Ed here, and he's worked for Winn-Dixie for 35 years, and he's going to retire in September. And he came to us, and he asked us if we could try to give him a more cushy job until then, and we'll do anything for Ed because he's a great employee. We love him. Uh, he's been with us all this time. But we did tell him that we would want him to find somebody else to take his position and train them before we put him into another job, and he agreed. And right away he said, the only man that I could think here that would be the man for the job is C.J. Ames. And he said, and that's you. Now, I want to tell you, my son had already started to bid on other jobs because years ago he was on the construction crew that helped to build all the Morning Star Lodges in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And he had fallen off of a scaffolding and broken two discs in his neck, had to have a metal plate, two screws, and a bone from his hip put in it. So when he's doing this forklift thing, he's having to constantly turn his head back, and he was in a lot of pain every time after his shift. So, and this new job would be inventory, working with computers, which is right down his alley, because he's actually gone into places that haven't had computer, it hasn't had their inventory on computer, and totally developed the programs for it and everything. So he was real excited about it, and they said, now here's the other thing. As soon as we do this, which is, it's going to take us about two weeks to work with all this paperwork, your pay will go from $14 an hour to $26 an hour. <laughs> now let me tell you what, when that happened, he realized the enemy was trying to take him out at the very same time God was creating a miracle blessing for him financially in every other way. And so the Lord's been speaking to me about this, and, you know, he told me, he says, I want to tell you this so that you can share it with other people on the road, Mom. He says, because I think there's something to this. And I really believe there is. Don't believe what you think you see. <laughs> Don't believe the enemy's lies. Don't believe his discouragement. Because at the very moment that he's preparing for us a blessing, restoration, and, and even uh, graduation, and I'm not talking about graduating to go home to be with the Lord. You know, I'm so tired of people wanting to uh, say that they'll get their reward when they go home. Listen, the Word of God says, you know, there's a, a scripture that says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> and so we can have the goodness of the Lord and the blessings in the land of the living. And that's what we need to be going for. And a lot of times it's real easy to die for the Lord, but we need to learn how to live for him. And so anyway, all of that has to do also with change. You know, some of the blessings and so forth are going to come through change. Excuse me. And one of the things that is important for us to know is that, you know, the purpose of change very often is to graduate us and to catapult us to the next layer of, or next level, excuse me, of what he's called us to do. But I also felt like the Lord said, this is a time of divine positioning and divine repositioning. So that can be right where you're at. Maybe there's another position, just like there was for my son. Another position right where you're at to move into. But on the other hand, sometimes it's a repositioning even of geographical location that he has for us. But whichever, you know, I really believe that it's a time for those suddenlies to come forth. And what the Lord spoke to me is, his suddenlies in place of the enemy's sudden lies. <laughs> because at the very same time, 
that those kind of things are going on, you know, the changes uh, to give us God's um, suddenlies, the enemy tries to come forth with his lies and to stop us from what God has called us to do. So, anybody been going through anything like that? Or am I speaking to the wind here? <laughs> but I really feel like that one of the things that we have to be very cautious of is our own emotions and our own imaginations. Because what will happen is that our imaginations can run away with us. Just like one morning, uh, the Lord spoke to me as I was waking up and he said, uh, I, I just heard the word kamikaze, okay? And I was like, oh no, I know what kamikaze is. You know, that's uh, what the pilots were that had, uh, uh, they, they were suicide pilots in, in the Second World War. And then also, if you remember 9-11, and they crashed and everything. And I was like, oh no, we're going to have another 9-11. Oh my goodness, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the Lord says, will you shut up? <laughs> And I was like, but it's true, that's what kamikaze means. And he said, get your dictionary. So I got my dictionary and I looked, and the literal meaning of kamikaze is spirit wind. And the Lord spoke to me and he says, truly, this is a time when you can choose to soar with the wind of my spirit or crash and burn. It's your choice. And he said, and if you go off with all your wild imaginations like you just did, you will crash and burn. You need to take a hold of those imaginations. Like the word says, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bring those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And the Lord's been speaking that to me um, for about the past year very strongly. And even having me, I might have even shared this part with you before, having me lay hands on my own head and, and just say, thoughts right now, I just bring each and every one of you into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And we can do that. You know, if our thoughts can speak to us, we can speak to our thoughts. And so in this time period, we need to understand that the part that we play in all of this is to bring our thoughts into captivity, to keep on like those Holy Spirit blinders and continue to go straight forward ahead and walk in discipline and obedience. So, so much so that we'll be able to turn to the enemy when he comes up with his lies and say, no, and speak the scripture. The scripture said, do this, I did this, and now I'm in line for the blessing of God. But one of the things the Lord spoke to me is that uh, the church in this time period has gotten lazy. And, and what he said about that is, he says, you know, they like the refrigerator scriptures, like how I'll work all things together for their good, but they forget the other part, which... That's, you know, praying in the Spirit, Romans 8, 26 and 27. And then we pray in the Spirit, we pray in the will of God about the things he wants us to pray about and the way he wants us to pray. Therefore, Romans 8, 28 comes into play. And he said, even in the area of finances, they like to say, God's going to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There won't be room enough to contain. But there's another part to it that they have to do first in order for me to do that. And it's in Malachi 3, in, in verse 10, it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there will not be room enough to receive it. And so the bottom line is, if we do that, if we bring our tithes into the storehouse, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing there won't be room enough to contain. But if we don't, then up in verse 8 it says we rob God. <laughs> And then we're cursed with a curse in verse 9, okay? And so we wonder sometimes why we're going through difficulties, but we have, and yet we're claiming, he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing There won't be room enough to contain. Uh, well, you didn't do your part, you know? And, but like I said, the church gets lazy, and they forget about their part or ignore their part or deliberately don't do their part with whatever that is. Because there's all of God's promises. I, I can't find one that there is not something we have to do, even salvation. Salvation is free, but we have to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Get it? There's an action on our part for the reaction on God's part. To get his promises, there's a part we've got to do, and we need to quit being lazy and do our part. And so uh, in the rest of that set of verses there also says this. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. 
Now get this, this was the really important part because this has to do with the time period we are going into right now. And all the nations will call you blessed for you'll be delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. And so what the Lord spoke to me in this is that even the nations will recognize and acknowledge the faithfulness of our God even though we don't receive the mark of the beast or anything else. And so even as the times are getting rougher and rougher, as we do our part, he will do his. And this is what he said, I will even cause them to fear you because they will see that you're not obeying the enemy and that I'm blessing you instead, so much so that you're going to be giving to them and it will be a protection for you as you keep your end of the bargain and I keep mine. And so we're in a time of awakening right now. Uh, I think I shared with you last time I was here what the Lord spoke to me about this year as the Jewish New Year. And you know we're in 5775 on the Jewish calendar and the 70s portion of it, that last portion, uh, is a time of eyes being opened, it's called Ayin, and being awake, because if our eyes are open, we're awake. And so God wants us to be awakened to the facts and not dwell on the enemy's lies. And if we're awakened to the facts, we will receive the blessings. In Isaiah 60, 1 and 2, it tells us, rise and shine. Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, although gross darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And so, you know, again, as well, in this time of awakening, we'll be even awakened further into our divine purposes and so forth. And, you know, I really believe in that the Lord is saying that this is the year that is a year of divine breakthrough. Now, breakthrough, um, you know, the word of God says, our God, in 1 Chronicles 14, 11, our God, I don't know about anybody else's, okay, but our God is the God of the breakthrough. Now, isn't that the best God to serve, <laughs> the God of the breakthrough? Not only that, but if you've lost hope, Romans 15, 13, our God is the God of hope. We've got what we have need of, but, but again, we need to do our part. And so last year was a time of alignment and decision-making and preparation to get us ready for this year. Now, what I want to tell you is, as I studied out about this year, again, you know, in the, the Jewish calendar and, and, and all of those resources and everything, I discovered that this year is called Ayin Teshua, T-E-S-H-U-A-H. And listen, I am not like a major scholar regarding Jewish stuff, and I don't like to try to put people under the law or anything like that. Um, and the Bible tells us not to do that. Let me just make that perfectly clear. We're not under the law, we're under grace. Oh, and by the way, it's grace to not sin, not grace to sin. Because <laughs> there's a false grace teaching out there that people are taking a hold of to make an excuse for their sin and saying that we've got the grace to sin. No, sir, no, ma'am. <laughs> he gives us the grace to not sin. That when sin is presented to us, we can say, no, thank you, I'm not going to do that. He'll give us the grace that we can go beyond that and not do that. So anyway, uh, Strong's reference 8668 explains what I in Teshua means, and it's the eye that sees rescue, okay? And there are six points to it, rescue, deliverance, help, safety, salvation, and victory. And so I'm just going to kind of expound on that for a few minutes, uh, what each point means. So number one, rescue is that he's rescuing us from fear, sin, deceptions of the enemy, wrongful thought patterns, whatever it is we need rescued from. Sometimes even wrong relationships, okay? Number two, deliverance. And what the Lord told me in that is, whatever you need delivered from, if it's uh, a habit you've been wanting to kick or a generational curse that's on your life, this is a year for deliverance. And for me, it's been, I've had this weight issue ever since I had my thyroid out 32 years ago, and I could get Nutrisystem and gain seven pounds in a week. And I mean, just follow it totally and completely. Weight Watchers, same thing. And I gained five pounds in a week. Nothing would work. But when the Lord gave me this word last June and I took a hold of it and he gave me his plan, things began to work. And I've actually lost over 75 pounds just since June of last year. 
So see, when God gives you a word and it really is from him and you, you can test the spirits as to whether they're from him, uh, it, it will pan out, okay? So number three, so we've had number one, rescue, number two, deliverance. Number three is help. And what the Lord told me in that, to expect reports of, as well as to experience much angelic activity, as well as heightened revelatory abilities. And he said, do this. Go ahead and request of him, request of God, to assign angels to each situation that concerns you. Listen, I was in Kansas City, and many of you know who follow me on Facebook. I, I'm not really sure if I follow storms or if storms follow me, but you know it happens all the time. So I went to Kansas City in the fall, and sure enough, this horrible ice storm was about to come up. And so I, you know, I've had three dogs traveling with me all the time, and so I, I had all three of them like this, and I'd gotten a cup of coffee at a drive through I just wanted to get everything in the hotel room all at once because it was getting so nasty out. So I had the coffee cup here, I had the three dog leashes here, I, and I had three bags of other things, clothing and things like that, and my toiletries and everything to take in the room. And then my purse was slung over my shoulder, and I reached in, I grabbed the key card, I was at a La Quinta, to do the outside door like this so that I could get in. And I was having a rough time. There was nobody there. I always try to make sure nobody's around because when you've got three dogs, they're like, oh, you little puppies. Then the dogs are jumping all over. So I try to make sure people aren't there so I can actually get in. And I go up to the door, and I'm struggling, and I almost dropped the key card, and I'm going like this, and all of a sudden a hand reaches over my shoulder with a key card and goes like this. And I turned and I looked, and then another hand reaches over my shoulder like this and grabs the handle of the door and opens it. And I'm trying to see who it is, and my dog lunges forward. My, my um, Sadie, she's the sheet suit, and she's the real wild one. And she starts barking because there's somebody in there. And so I looked, and I'm like, knock it off, you know? And I turned back around, and there was nobody there. Nobody. Not close, not far, like nobody was there. And I really believe the Lord used an angel to open that door for me at that time period. And, you know, a lot of other things have happened. So just know that he'll bring you the help when you need the help, even if he has to send an angel. Okay, so rescue, deliverance, help. The next one's safety. And the Lord spoke to me this in regard to the Ebola crises as well as ISIS threats and so forth. Psalm 91 and Psalm 106, 29 through 31. And, you know, Psalm 91, you know, tells us that we're hidden beneath the shadow of the wings of the Almighty and that he's going to protect us from the arrows that fly by day, from the pestilences and so forth. And then Psalm 106, 29 through 31 talks about how the, the Israelites had really torqued God off. And so he sent a plague among them. But Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was stopped. And so the Lord says, don't forget that my word is very powerful and, and read it and know that you've got safety. I've got you covered in this time period and just even speak these scriptures out over your situation. And number five is salvation. And very simply, he said, expect to see those come into the kingdom this year that you thought never would. <laughs> and so we can just even ask the Holy Spirit, because the word says, no one comes except the Holy Spirit call them. So we can say, Holy Spirit, call so-and-so in, and he will. You know, even in, I think it's Zephaniah or Zechariah, one of the Z books, <laughs> 3.10, and it says that he will whistle for them and call them by name. And so I just speak to the birds of the air and I say, go whistle and call my son in. Or go whistle and call this or that person in. And I believe that they do. And so number six is victory. And the Lord spoke to me in this and he said, long overdue victories, even legal or court battles, will be coming to victorious closure in this season. So, anybody see why the enemy is trying so hard to discourage us and make us give up? Because all of these wonderful things are up ahead. I mean, it just gets to the point where it's just so laughable. I mean, you could not believe it. Oh, I meant to introduce my friend Alice here. Wave at us, Alice. Alice Garza, she and her husband head up Radio Air Jesus, uh, which is a 24-7 uh, Christian radio station over the Internet. And they go and, and they... Uh, tape and broadcast conferences and so forth over that. But she can tell you, 
even the past week I've been staying at her home, what warfare <laughs> has been about. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to leave Alabama, but I'm sure that there's some other kind of warfare someplace else for me, you know, it doesn't have to do with that. And it's not like we're just so anointed that warfare follows us, you know. <laughs> You ever get to have somebody just get so proud that they're in so much warfare? I'm just so wonderful that the enemy's after me all the time. <laughs> Listen, he's after anybody that belongs to the Lord. That's why prisons are filled and everything else. There's a lot of people in there that have the call of the Lord on them. And we need to pray one for another. No, not any one person is better than the other one. You hear me? God loves us all just the same, just like we love all of our kids just the same. But anyway, I'm getting off on another track there. But I really believe that the Lord is saying in this time period that we need to trust him and believe in him and believe that he is the God of our breakthrough, believe that he's our God of hope, and focus on him. Just say that word, focus, focus. And just you know, speak that one to another. And so one morning he said to me, because I'm going around, you know, I like that song, these are the days of Elijah. I can't sing, so don't expect anything good out of that. <laughs> I'll quit. You don't have to leave. I'll quit. And, uh, and he said, no, it's not. And I was like, great, another voice I have to rebuke here. <laughs> I'm always rebuking God, and then he laughs at me, you know. <laughs> he hasn't killed me yet because he knows how. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's that dumb grandmother, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and he says, listen, you're in the Elisha generation. <laughs> it's not the days of Elijah. You're in the Elisha generation, the day of the double portion. And also, you know, it's a time period now. We've seen Bob Jones, John Paul Jackson, and uh, Oral Roberts, and many others go home to be with the Lord. And the Lord said that their mantles are being redistributed and even multiplied because it's not going to be in just one person, but there's pieces of those mantles going to each one who sat under their ministries and were encouraged and, t and taught by them. And so just know you can walk in a higher level than anybody that's gone before you. But again, you've got to be faithful in what you're called to do as well. So um, this whole past fall, uh, during around the time of Rosh Hashanah, I was going to say something else. I don't know what. I was mixing the two words together. <laughs> I was having like all of these open visions and dreams and everything else. It was pretty wild. And so one was that I walked out my back door, and this was in the, in the dream, and there was an eagle sitting on my porch on the banister. And it was kind of like it was just commonplace for an eagle to be there. And I said, oh, hi, what are you doing here today? You got a message for me? And he said, yes, sit down and listen. So I sat down, and he didn't say anything. And I'm like, uh, so what do you want to tell me? And he says, listen. And so I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. He doesn't say anything. And finally I said, you know, I got company coming in about 30 minutes, so I need to vacuum my floor. Can you, like, hurry up and tell me what the message is? <laughs> if you can imagine, like, who would give a flip about company when you're sitting there talking to an eagle? <laughs> but we're just as dumb in our dreams as we are in real life, I guess. And he said, I did tell you the message. I'm telling you, listen. Be careful and listen. There are things you won't have to ask, and listening may even save your life. Listen. He said, listen to God, listen to others, listen to the news, pay attention to what's being said. Some things won't need to be asked if you just listen. And I'm telling you what, there's times I've been so tempted. I just love to give my opinion, don't you? <laughs> I just love to tell people the way things are because I know I'm right, <laughs> don't you? And, but he's been telling me more and more, shut up and listen. Listen to what's being said by others, because this is a time when revelation is heightened, and I will speak to you through the very person that's right in front of you. And so it's so important. So another morning, um, I woke up, and this actually happened to me while I was awake. Got out of bed. My hair gets all messed up like bedhead when I first get up in the morning. So I reached out of my dresser, and I would comb through my hair, and then all of a sudden, and this was what I would call an experiential open vision because I was awake. All of a sudden, I was not in my bedroom. I was in the heavenlies. And you ever see those fireplace matches that are really long? Well, the Lord reached his hand out with the biggest fireplace match to the biggest menorah I've ever seen, and he lit it. And the anointing and the power of God was so strong, I literally 
fell back into a seating position on my bed. And then he grabbed the menorah and he turned and he handed it to me and as he did, it became the size that I could carry. And I walked through this long dark hallway lighting the way and other people were coming out of the darkness and following me. So I called a Jewish friend of mine and I felt like the Lord said that she would explain it for me. And she said, the menorah is lit during the last, during the eight days of Hanukkah and symbolizes a miracle of oil as provision. And the oil that lasted one day lasted eight. And God wants you to know that this is a time and season when he's bringing forth the miracle of provision for and through his people. In other words, whatever you need, God is going to provide. And with the vision comes a provision at the proper timing. But we, again, we can't get off in this imagination and uh, thing and, and just, you know, emotions running high and, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You know, the Spirit of the Lord says, shut up <laughs> to you, just like he does to me, because if we'll just listen, he'll give us the answers that we have need of and the direction that we seek. But, you know, if we just keep talking, we're not going to hear what he has to say, folks. So we need to be those who listen. And, and as we do, we'll hear his instructions. And sometimes we're not going to know exactly what it is or why it is that he's telling us to do different things. I don't have a complete picture of my move to Arizona. I do know that I have opportunities to go overseas, and it's definitely going to put me near a bigger airport than Donkeyville, you know, where, where I'm living, where I've been living in West Virginia. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just like the very slow transportation and everything else, small airport that could fit right in the Marietta Vineyard, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Uh, have larger airports and so forth and better access to those type of things. I don't have a full picture of what he has for me. And some of what I thought he had for me, it appears that that's not the case. And so it's like, okay, what am I going to do? Say, well, then I'm not going to go there, you know? Listen, our, our thoughts, you know, God's thoughts are higher and ways are higher than ours. And it's just like, okay, God, whatever you have for me, I'm all for that. And I just trade my sorrows or trade my own thoughts for yours, Lord. And I'm willing to go forward in that. And, and again, you know, sometimes we're willing to settle for less than what God has for us. And so maybe he'll even dangle whatever it is we're willing to settle for as the carrot to get us to do what he's called us to do. Like Mahesh Chabda used to say, our God's Jehovah Sneaky. <laughs> and, and I really believe, though, that, you know, as we follow him, we're also going to receive a level of restoration. It's going to be a Joel 2.25 time where he's going to restore even the years the locust and canker worm has eaten. And then I felt like that he said he wants to unlock your potential. And he wants to be able to tap into that that he has on the inside of you that you don't even know is there. And when he spoke that to me, he had me look it up, the word potential. And the root word is potent which means powerful or power-filled. So you've got far more on the inside of you than you've been willing to see or been able to see. Sometimes, because of all we've been through, we don't even know we've got any potential. You know, when I was younger and had gone through all the stuff I did, I've told you all before, I was born and raised in Dysfunction Junction, <laughs> and I just didn't think I had any potential in the Lord. But God would use prophetic people to speak to me. And the word says that there's a righteous seed of God on the inside of each and every one of us. And he would have those people speak that to me. And as they did, I began to see that there was something more in me than I knew was there. So take a hold of those prophetic words. And like it says in 1 Timothy 4, 13 through 16, meditate on them and give yourself entirely to them so that your progress will be evident to all. And so, you know, in this time, I just, you know, want to re-encourage you. Pay attention to what time and season you're in. You know, and we, we know sometimes, you know, we're at the end of one thing and the beginning of another or the middle of another. And, and as we see that, you know, operate in that uh, instead of the things that are over with. Let go of the past, you know, let go of what's dead <laughs> and, and go on forward into what God has for us. You know, even the Super Bowl this year was very prophetic. I'm not really into football, and I really don't care 
what team wins or loses because I don't really have a favorite, except that I just knew that prophetically it would be a bad day if a team named the Patriots were to lose. <laughs> just saying. I don't want the Patriots of America to lose, right? And so I was like, God, you know, I don't want to see that happen, so I just ask you that they win. But, you know, I believe God allowed both teams, for us to see, both teams were equally matched. They were both as good as the other. It was anybody's game. But there was the intervention at the end, and a man named Butler caught the ball. And when, when he did, he said to the lady that was interviewing him, excuse me, I had a vision last night. I had a vision that I made the big play. And then he just he shut himself up real quick so that people wouldn't think he was a nutcake. <laughs> But it was enough for those of us who understand that kind of thing to take a hold of that and to say, this is a sign. God is saying, pay attention to your vision because you will win. Even if it's down to the wire, even if it's down to the last moment, you'll win. And you know, in football anyway, like you can have three minutes left, but those three minutes might last 20 minutes to play out. <laughs> All right. And so the enemy is trying to tell some of you, you don't have the time left to walk in what God has called you to, but that is such a lie. The other thing is, is that the number of the Super Bowl this year was 49. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I looked it up, and it's the number of the Father's love. Okay, and again, on the Jewish calendar, this coming year uh, that we're going into, it's a Jubilee year, and guess what? The year that we'll be in the Jubilee year will be Super Bowl number 50, and 50 is the number for Jubilee. So the enemy is trying to thwart things, stop you, divert you, uh, however you want to put it, <clears throat> before the blessing, to, sometimes even to try to take you out. Don't let that happen. Don't focus on what the enemy says, but focus on God. And again, it's not like we have to uh, pay attention to the enemy's lies, even in the area of, oh, there's such warfare, or be afraid to walk in what God called us to because we're afraid of the warfare. Because you know what? Greater is he that's in you. And, and God will protect you. Amen? Amen? Did that mean anything to anybody here? <laughs> I hope it encouraged you. And so just remember, this is your year to recover all. And so grab a hold of that. It's your year for breakthrough. And you know what? Let's just as a prophetic act... Uh, just reach out and just and prophetically, you know, do a prophetic act and just say, I just take a hold of my breakthrough and, and I pull it into me. Lord, uh, I receive it. Breakthrough, come to me right now in Jesus' name. And if you need finances, Lord, I just call in finances from the north, south, east, and west. You want more people in your church? Lord, I just call in those who are supposed to be here from the north, south, east, and west. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we ask you to send forth your holy unfallen angels to retrieve the blessings and to get those released from those where those blessings have been held back. Amen? Amen? Hey, can I get you all to do something with the lights for me for a minute so I can see people? Oh, yes, I see people. I see live people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very alive people here at the Marietta Vineyard. Aren't you glad you're in a live church? <laughs> it's exciting. Hey, listen, I don't know who it is, but right now the Lord just dropped in my spirit that there's somebody watching this um, over the Internet right now, and the Lord says um, that he's doing a healing in their body. Um, and it, it's uh, even some type of like a cancerous growth, and he's bringing healing. I saw that thing shrink up right now. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. And somebody else that, um, again, uh, on, in your Internet congregation, um, and the Lord is saying that they've been having a difficulty even with job situations and everything else. Not only does he have the right job, I got Holy Ghost goosebumps all over me right now. Not only does he have the right job for you, but uh, there is some type of a financial blessing, a big, huge one that's coming your way, and it's coming even this week. Amen. God's breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. You know, just really pray for your, the people that are watching you over the Internet. There are some people that can't get out of their houses. Sometimes just for a day. Sometimes there's people that this will become their church. And the Lord is saying, that's your congregation too. They're your internet congregation. 
pay attention to them. And even as they write to you, find out who they are and uh, if you can even uh, communicate with them somehow. Because God's building his church sometimes in ways that we don't really understand. But he told me a long time ago that he would use the internet, the net as a net, to pull many in. Amen? So um, there, there's uh, a lady back here with the blonde hair, and you got like white something or other on your front of your shirt, and a man next to you. What are your names? Bonnie and Bill? Bonnie and Bill? Phil. Phil. Okay. At least it's not Bonnie and Clyde. No. <laughs> so, Lord, I thank you for Bonnie and Phil. And, uh, Lord, I just ask you to speak expressly concerning them. Um, the Lord says that you are in a season, coming through to a season of breakthrough, that it's, there's been a lot of difficulties and that a lot of discouragement. But God says you're coming into a breakthrough season and to hold on and to know he is God and that he loves you. And I saw a, angel wings wrapping around you and just like hovering around you like this. And, and loving on you and protecting you. A lot of changes going on, but it, it's good. It's all good. Amen. Amen. Uh, and there's a man in the blue back there. You just put something around somebody. Who's next to you? My wife. Okay, what's your first names? I'm Ralph and Julie. Ralph and Julie? Okay. So, Lord, I thank you for Ralph and Julie. And I thank you for bringing them here this morning. And um, the Lord, as you were throwing that cover around her shoulders, um, the Lord said that he's got you both covered. He's, he's got your backs. That there's just been some concern and so forth, but he's got your backs. And just even in a, um, uh, like a business way, there is some type of a business situation, uh, whether it's already arisen or about to, but he says he's got your backs. Don't worry. Amen. Praise God. And the gentleman in the orange shirt and the lady next to him? What's your names? Are you married? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> I think it's orange. <laughs> and, and what's your first name? Ryan and? Ronnie and Kathy. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you for Ronnie and Kathy. And uh, I feel like the Lord said, this is going to be a year to expound on that which he's already told you. And it's like the vision growing and walking greater in it than what you so far have. And I just kept hearing the word expound and then I heard the word abound. And so those two words will be very important for you. Expound and abound. Amen. Is that your son over there? Okay. What's your first name? Gavin. Lord, we thank you for Gavin. We thank you for what a fine young man he is and for all that you have for him. And God says... Gavin, he loves you. You're an awesome guy. Um, and he even likes your spirit of mischief. That, um, <laughs> that uh, he laughs. You make him laugh. <laughs> and God sits in the heavens and laughs sometimes at people that are, are strange or bad. But he laughs with you and at you. Oh, what was that? Okay. <laughs> and uh, I forgot about that thing. <laughs> I, and, uh, and he said that the joy of the Lord is your strength and that you help others to have joy with the joy that God gives to you. Um, but I also felt like that he said to tell you, you are a winner. You are a winner and you're going to win. And that um, there is a competitive spirit on the inside of you. Um, and God put it there because he made you to be a winner. Amen. Isn't God awesome? So let's see. I had a piece of paper here that I was writing some people's names on that I felt like the Lord was speaking to me about. Let me grab it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was a blue one. Oh, okay. So there was a blonde-haired lady, and I asked um, Denise... Her name, sometimes, by the way, forgive me, people, I don't always remember people's names. <laughs> so where is uh, Becky Gaines? Is she in here? She left? Okay, who wants Becky's word? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, her husband in here, Rick? Okay, can you stand up right there? Oh, yeah, okay.
So Lord, I just thank you for Rick and Becky, and I thank you for all that you have for them. And I felt like the Lord said um, that this is going to be a year for you. I, I actually heard that thing of he's going to open up the window of heaven and pour out a blessing there won't be room enough to contain. And the Lord says, you've been faithful in the little, and now comes the much. And in Hebrews, it says he has not forgotten in how you have and do minister to the saints. And just a uh, sensing of, uh, it's like, I kept hearing the word spectacular breakthrough, actually. Spectacular breakthrough. Amen. That's it. Okay, now where did Troy go to? Troy, Troy, Troy. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, so, Lord, I just, just go ahead and stand up, Troy. Um, so, Lord, I thank you for Troy, and I thank you for all you're doing in his life, Lord, and uh, just for who you made him to be. And I feel like the Lord said uh, there's an open door for you. Uh, Revelation 4.1, come up here and I'll show you things to come. And that God really wants to speak to you in a revelatory way in this time and season. This is your year, uh, even a year of breakthrough for you, but it's also your year to access that throne room more than ever. And in the process of that, Jeremiah 30, verse 2, write or journal all those things the Lord has told you. But the Lord says he's giving to you an ability to dream, and but it's like at the same time you're dreaming, like to see those things come into reality. And he said, so dream big. Amen. That's it. Oh, but, oh, no, that's not it. Um, I saw you going on some more trips. And uh, he said, it's also a year to travel. Uh, but he said, you're going to find yourself travel more than in the natural, in the spiritual realms as well. And there's something that will happen in one of these places. Like the Lord's just showing this to me as I'm saying it. Something's going to happen. Don't be easily shaken. Because even when there seems to be a delay or something, maybe even if it's something like in customs, don't get shaken up by it, shaken up by it, okay? Because he has a reason for that delay. And maybe even a word that you're supposed to give to somebody or whatever. So just ask God. But know that it's, it's him and it's his divine delay. Um, I, need, I need to bring Alice up for just a second. She had a word for the church. That's okay. Do you have an extra mic you can hand her? Hi, good morning. Um, as I was in worship today, I just really felt my spirit that um, the enemy tried to put a spirit of hope defer upon this place. But is, as Joni was saying, I haven't told her anything about your church, by the way, just so you know. Breakthrough is here this morning. And um, I saw the angels stepping in here and breaking things of the impossible over your lives and making the possible begin to happen. Um, some of you have gone very weary and tired. And the scripture I heard was, um, it says about Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. And it said, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth. He never grows weary, weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and the strength to the powerless. Even youth will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary and they will walk and not grow faint. And I believe that is your word for this season is that you're eagles and you're meant to soar and fly. And there's been a lot of junk and gunk trying to hold you down and hold you back. But the Lord is speaking that breakthrough is upon you this morning to start shaking that stuff off. Literally, you physically can shake yourself off and just shake off all that mess. Yeah, so just do that right just, now, right yeah, where you're at. You'll shake feel the, the, the loosening even in your muscles and joints. Some of you have even been sick in your bones. Your bones have been hurting you and your muscles have been feeling real tight. Um, like even in the morning when you get up, you have a hard time even walking um, out of your bed. But the Lord is going to begin to loosen your joints and your muscles. And it's because he's sending the oils. That's why. Um, the, heaven, the oils from heaven are going to begin to seep in this place. 
and um, I saw doors of opportunity opening up in this place and ministries being launched out of this place. Um, the five women that are pregnant is a big hello to you because it's, it's bir being birthed a new thing out of the grace of God. And there's a great birthing that's coming forth out of this place, but it's his grace. Some of you have been really afraid of disappointing or upsetting the Lord. And so you have like these books that you have had saved up, spirals and books of creative ideas you've had in these books. And it's time for you to pull them out and start doing what you've written inside of them. Because, um, because of this grace that's upon you, you should not fear. Like Joni was saying earlier, there should be no fear that comes upon you that makes you feel like you're going to be a disappointment to God because you're not. His um, obedience surpasses all understanding. That's what the Lord says. So in your ob obedience, even though you don't understand what God's doing, because obedience is what you're moving in, it surpasses everything else. And you'll find the breakthrough in that very thing that you've been trying to avoid. That very thing you've been trying to run away from is the very thing that's going to bring you breakthrough. Um, so run towards it. Don't run away from it um, because the Lord is with you. Um, yes, and I, I just saw like a couple of words for people here. Um, there was a couple that was standing up here. I don't even know if you're a couple. I just saw y'all standing up here. Um, the girl with the green shirt and the guy with the, are, are y'all a couple? I really saw the Lord launching your ministry this season, and I saw this great fire coming upon you. Um, just the Lord just blowing on you this fire. But in this fire, I saw you not being able to stay still because the fire was so on your feet and your legs. Like you were just like ready to just go do what Jesus had you to do. And it's not even a, a, a thing where you're thinking about it or questioning it. This fire is going to cause you to be driven to move in what he's called you to do. Um, it's really going to be amazing. I'm really excited. And... Um, I saw that, um, I don't know who you are, I, and forgive me for not remembering your name, but I really saw that you your young, to? this young lady right here. The blonde hair girl, okay. <laughs> um, I saw that you're young, but the Lord's given you a lot of wisdom in your life. And the reason why you have so much wisdom is because the Lord's really called you to be a kingdom builder. And in that, I really saw you owning your own business and you being like a CEO of your business. And really, um, you always want to be take charge kind of person, but that's from the Lord. If you just begin to take that take, the take charge uh, person God's called you to be and start applying it to, to the things of the Lord, it's going to be mighty awesome. I mean, God, you'll see things flourish Things that take lots of years, you'll see it bloom fast, 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 because the Lord's really anointed you for that. So thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, when she was saying about it being a year of birthing, uh, the Lord spoke to me through a television commercial. Sometimes, you know, he does that. And uh, it's a Geico television commercial, and, um, and it has this these like four ladies I think it is they kind of act like cheerleaders with different people and so there's this one guy and he's trying to open a door and he's trying to pull it but it clearly says on it push and they're behind him they're going push it push it push it real good and then it goes to somebody else they're trying to do a push lawnmower but it's real they're really having a hard time and so they're behind him cheering going push it push it push it real good and then there's a lady that's in a labor room and trying to deliver a baby, and they're, they're, behind, they're right there going, push it, push it, push it real good. And the Lord spoke to me through that, and he said, this is, tell my people this is a year to push. This is a year to push and birth that which I've called them to do. Not to lay back and to wait for it, but time to push. And sometimes, you know, we're like, I'm waiting on God, I'm waiting on God. And that's just really a religious spirit trying to make you not accomplish what God has called you to. And God is saying he's waiting on you, and it's time to push, time to push through to the victory. And uh, Rebecca, um, yeah, you, uh, <laughs> if you could stand up for a second. Uh, the Lord spoke to me through even the shirt that you're wearing, and he said that that was a prophetic sign, even like Joseph's coat of many colors. And the Lord says that this is a time for you just like you're wearing that and walking in it, 
not to see the promises from afar, but to walk in them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And um, for Kelly and Lee, uh, I, I just got for you, God says, his hand of protection has been upon you, even against you. <laughs> like that, um, you know, I don't mean like against you, kind of, kind of a thing. He says, but that he has protected you even from things like that, um, uh, even like getting over exuberant about different things and, and that kind of thing. Because he said there's a time and a season for everything. To everything there's a time and a season and a purpose. But just to know you're in the right place at the right time and, and to just trust him. It's a season to trust him more than ever. And not to think like, what did I do? Did I make a mistake? And I know in the natural there were a couple things you wanted to do. And, but I felt like that the Lord said that he protected you even from uh, having like a, a really good heart regarding some of what you wanted to do, but that there's greater favor to come and go than to be there in the place where you were going to go. And he showed me like the picture of when I mistakenly went someplace and I actually lost favor and I lost authority with those people because once you get there, you're too common. And he said he didn't want you to be too common to that people group, that he wanted you to maintain authority so that as you come and go, you would be able to walk in the authority that he has for you. Amen? Make sense to you? <laughs> okay. And um, Sally, where'd you go to? Okay. <laughs> And um, yeah, I was just really excited to see your face. And there was just a, a simple thing that the Lord showed me. He showed you to me, and you were sitting in evidently your living room, and you were watching television. And there was like a discouragement that had come on you because the, what you were watching, you wanted to go do. Uh, and the Lord spoke to me in, in regard to that for you as well about times and seasons. And he said that, there's about to be an open door for you to do some travel. I even saw you going overseas to Israel. Uh, but the Lord said he had you stay put and stationary for a particular season. And I just saw it as being that time of refreshing and restoration and also him putting into you what you needed for the next level of what he had for you to do. But I also heard him say it's time to write. It's time to write. Amen. And where's Christina at? Is she still in here, Christina? Okay, so who wants her word? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is, what's your first name? Pardon me? David. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you for Christina and David. And, Lord, I just thank you uh, that you have your hand upon them. I just heard, as Christina was up here, I, I felt like the Lord said, even through her name, that she's about to hear him in a more crystal clear way and that he has much to speak to her and that as he does it's going to be a time for her uh, to even write these things down even songs of the lord that he was going to release to her and to pay close attention to the spirit and not think she was going crazy or whatever because she's going to just hear these things and and just even begin singing them out even prophetic words over people but to sing them over people yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Jesse, I heard about your new car. <laughs> I can't wait to see it out there. Uh, but I felt like the Lord said even that was a prophetic sign um, because a car often symbolizes ministry. And the Lord said, behold, I do a new thing. And that there's something new that he's releasing you to and into in this season. And he's updating you. Updating you and upgrading you. And it's going to be, it's going to have a lot more power. And that in that, I just see you operating in a level of power that you haven't really utilized. It's been in you the whole time. God knows what he put in you. But actually operating in it. And I saw you teaching with great authority. Amen. 
And then I heard over you, the best is yet to come. He hasn't forgotten his promises to you. The best is yet to come. Amen. Isn't God good? He's just... I, this week, I was just like so excited. Um, so many different things happened. And, you know, he's just given me such a privilege to know so many awesome people through being in the ministry and travel so many awesome places. And I got to sit with somebody in government in their home and... Um, they've been friends of mine for years, and they weren't in the position they're in now way back then. And I was like, do you know how many people would give their eye teeth to be sitting in, in their dining room eating dinner with them and laughing and talking like old friends like we are right now? Oh, my gosh. You know, a CNN and Fox News would pay big bucks for this. Yeah. <laughs> and not that I'm wanting to tell them or anything. I'm not. <laughs> As the Bible says, minister privately to those reputation, but it's not even just to minister. They're my friends. And I sat there, and I just wanted to weep. I was like, God, you've gifted me with friends like these? I mean, I'm nobody. You know, and, and I, you know I'm not trying to be strange about that, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> these are famous people, and, and, and they were sharing some things with me that weren't yet public and everything. And I was like, oh, God, please shut my mouth. Don't let me tell anybody these things, you know. <laughs> Hasn't been released yet. <laughs> And all of that. But God, our God's an awesome God, and, and he'll open opportunities for us just as we serve him that'll just astound us. I mean, I've, I've been astounded over the past couple of weeks, the situations that he's had me in. And the privilege sometime that it is, and I know this is really going to sound strange, to even be involved in other people's warfare. <laughs> you know, to be able to be there at an instant when they need somebody and you got the goods that's going to rescue them. It's like an Esther moment for such a time as this. God puts you in that person's life. And it's like, wow, of all the people you could have put here, and I'm the one that knows the answer, and you put me here because you gave me the answer for them. See, I mean, it just you can't outdo God. He's just so cool. So, And so, Lord, I just lift up Ron and Denise to you, and I just thank you for them, and I just uh, thank you for all that you have for them. You know, I felt like the Lord said, uh, first of all, you know this is true. He doesn't make any mistakes. And, but in that, he said, you haven't made any mistakes either, and that you've heard from him clearly, even in regard to being here. And I felt like he said, there's a turning of the tide about to take place, and you're going to see why some things have happened, even some things with some people. And he said, there's confirmation that's going to come to you in some astounding ways but also a greater level of provision. And he said, you will get your own house this year. He has your own house for you. And actually, there, there's a, a verse about that. Hang on just a second. Um, can you bring me my phone, please? Because I actually put it in there. I don't remember the address, so I have to refer to my notes. <laughs> Hang on. I can't believe it. I erased it. Okay. Anyway, there's actually a verse, and it says, God says he is building you a house. So in whatever way that is, I see him building you a house. Oh, here it is. God says he will make you a house. Thank you, Lord. Actually, I had a little marker in it. And it's in 2 Samuel 7, verse 11, the end of it. And he says, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. And it's really important about that because there's a stability and a security that it's going to give you in your hearts, even in regard to here. But he says he's building you a house. But the other thing is, he said he's building uh, you a, a personal house, but also that there's something about a location change as well, and he's building the church a house. So uh, whether that's a literal, he's building something brand new, or he just, you know, saying, you know, that he's giving that to you, I don't know. But uh, I felt like that he says uh, there's a, a great move that's about to come to this place. And I, I also felt like that he said, Ron, that um, there's a level of authority that you're about to walk in, even within your denomination here. Um, he's moving you up to the next level. And 
it's going to require more time of you even to do some travel because of it, um, because you'll be going uh, on behalf of even the region in some different places. Uh, but the Lord says it's him and not to second guess him and that the right people will be in the right places of authority by the time that happens and there won't be any concerns in that regard either. But there's a level, a change in the level of finances that you've been using, used to having to um, uh, adhere to isn't really the right word but kind of but uh, almost be stuck under kind of a thing. And he said he's bringing you all in this church up to another level in the area of finances as well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And just a blanket word that I felt like that the Lord was giving over the congregation is uh, really... Over and over again, I just kept hearing this word, and I was trying to look for who it was for, but no matter which direction I looked in, he gave it. Because sometimes, just so you know, you'll hear a word, and you don't know who it's for, so you turn another direction, and then you, it's not there, and then you turn that direction, and then all of a sudden it lands on somebody, and that's how you know who it's for. Um, but I felt like that he said, double for your trouble. And so I believe it's, it's a word for everybody, double for your trouble this year, double for your trouble. But in that, it might even be a whole lot more than double. I, um, as I was researching this year on the Jewish calendar and everything, and again, I'm not like some real major scholar when it comes to all that, but the Lord was really speaking through all that. Um, I, I found out that this year, last year was the year of the open door. This is the year. <laughs> what a good thing to close off with. This is the year that Jesus, the Messiah, walks through the open door and obtains for the believer, get this, the double, the triple, and even the quadruple portion. And so again, now you know why the enemy's been trying to stop you. He's been trying to thwart you from obtaining, excuse me, that blessing. And even as I said that, and I went over this way, Real quick, I saw you, Sandra, and I felt like the Lord said there's something job-wise that the Lord says promotion comes from him and, and double honor and double blessing. Something in, in the job, uh, in the arena, of the arena of the job. But he says also more requirements. There's uh, more requirements of you even in your personal relationship and walk with the Lord and everything else. And that he's... Um, pressing you into another level with him in, in that way. And as you're faithful in the little, then he'll bring forth the much. You know, God sometimes really does kind of put the squeeze on us when he brings us up to another level. Then there's a greater level even of accountability, and I feel like that's a season for many right now. I know it is for me, but again, I just want to say this. If you're going through something, don't look at that. Because it's just like what happened with my son. And truly, uh, as the enemy is trying to do things and discourage you, and you can go ahead and come up, Ron. As the enemy is trying to do things to discourage you and make you think that you're defeated, at that very same moment, God is creating for you that blessing and restoration and even coming up to another level, financially and every other way. It was financially for my son, but I'm telling you what, some of you, it's spiritually as well and i believe it's spiritually for him as well too but you know what i mean don't look at things the way that they seem because the, the, the way that they seem is not the way that it is amen before we go if you would um joni lives by faith and we're going to take a love offering up. And whatever you give now, every dime of it is going to go to Joni. If you only have a checkbook and you want to write a check, you just write out the MVC and put Joni in the uh, memo, and we'll make sure she gets that. Um, she never asks for anything when she comes, and she doesn't expect anything. She's always gracious because she knows we're a small congregation, and she'll do everything she can to 
not be a burden in any way. Sounds like Paul. He said he didn't want to be a burden to the churches. So, um, but we want to bless her, okay? So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for Joni. We thank you for the gifting. We thank you for her love for you, for your body. And we ask that you bless this offering as we take it up to give to her, to move her forward in what you've called her to do. In Jesus' name, amen. While we're doing that, a couple quick things. Uh, this Wednesday, we continue in our study on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's called Pertaining to the Spirit. And we've been having some good times, some good times lately. If uh, you're missing out, you're missing out. Okay? So 7 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Uh, the young people meet at uh, 7 also in the youth room. Um, something else that I can't remember. I'm just, I got, and I thank you all for because we went long today. And I thank you all for your, oh, yes, thank you. Tonight, Joni's going to be at the gathering place. That's the address. Starts at 6. You all are welcome to go. Um, Pastor Becky said that, uh, remember Mike and Becky Shaley, they came here a number of times, and Mike just passed away last year. And But Becky's continuing on and pastoring the church. So if you want to go, there's the address, 6 o'clock. Okay? Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Um, anyways. <laughs> All right, let's stand up. Okay, get the finger up. Okay, the holy finger. For those of your guests, there's a reason we do this, okay? Okay? And the guests are going like, what are you doing? Okay, this is not a condemnation finger anymore. This is a blessing finger. Now turn your, your somebody next to you, okay? Turn to somebody next to you. Point the finger at them, okay? Now repeat after me. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. heed the word. Heed the word. Because, because Jesus is watching. And me too. And me. All right, bless each other and go on and go. Hey, uh, real quick before everybody leaves the room, is anybody missing a ring? Is there are there any females missing a ring? It has a what? Okay, thank you.